Welcome back to Reddit Stories, uh, where we read Reddit stories and we freak out and we question life. Today's guests are Amanda and a special guest, call me Chris. Stop. Hello. Hey. Uh, the theme today, in case you haven't noticed from the lighting, is a spooky. These are some spooky stories today. <laughs> no, I didn't today. really actually notice, but <laughs> you didn't notice that it's spooky very scary. In here? The blue and green light. <laughs> it's very scary. No, it's very scary. Okay, very scary. Uh, both of you are big fans of spooky stuff, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. I love scary stuff. I love horror movies, paranormal. Paranormal. I mean, being from Massachusetts, true everything. crime. True crime. Love. love. We just talked about Dateline. Love. Hello. Dateline. Totally spooky. Hosted by a ghost. <laughs> He's alive. <laughs> He's alive. He's actually Don't you never ever die. Say that. Now, <laughs> we're going to be reading a lot of. I think there's a lot of paranormal stuff in here. A lot of supernatural stories. This all comes from Reddit. Which, by the way, Chris, are you ever on Reddit? Um, I do go on there now, so, once in a while, because because I like watching this show. And you guys introduced me to Reddit. I didn't even really? really know what it was. And I was like, oh, I can go on and like read crazy stories. Like, yeah, mm -hmm. I'm gonna do that. So I have because of you guys. Okay. Now Look I have an that. unhealthy addiction because of Smudge. Oh, nice. well, so, good. Yeah, that. stay on the right, <laughs> stay on the right subreddits, or yeah. else no, that's it gets bad pretty that's quick. True. Yeah. yeah. So most of these. Supernatural. There's a few that aren't supernatural, mm -hmm. uh, but we promise you that you will be able to sleep tonight with the way we organized it. There's some palate cleansers in there. It's gonna get spooky, but it's not gonna get like horrible. Terrifying. Okay. Yeah, you're not gonna feel bad, I don't think. Okay. I think it's just gonna be like, whoa, whoa. <laughs> okay. I don't know, I get very involved. Yeah, when emotionally. someone tells me a they're like, yeah, there was a ghost. I'm like, my whole body yeah. gets chills. We're very empathetic. Do We're very, so empathetic. You, very empathetic people. So you both believe in ghosts? <laughs> yes, 100%. 100%. 100%. Oh, Whoa, wow, both. Yeah. No, yeah. no, there is ghosts. I'm just saying that. They're now. everywhere. Yeah. There's a couple right in here right now, and they don't really like the lighting. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. I love the lighting. <laughs> I just wanted to have fun. It's all jokes. It's all jokes. <laughs> so, I've, uh, Amanda, you already know this about me, oh is that God. I am a skeptic, but I'm a skeptic because I want ghosts to be real. I, I hope they are. Yeah. Uh, I, I hope a lot of stuff is real, but the stuff that I hope is real, I actively, <laughs> Phew, okay, sneeze at my beliefs. <laughs> Get out those demons. Sorry. But I, whenever something happens or I hear a story, I can't help but try to be like, all right, well, what are all the explanations that's, for it? That's good. I don't jump to, that's a ghost. Well, that no, that's good. good. That's good. No, that's, an, that's what you have to do. And yeah. I was the same. I was the same. Like, you have to go into it. I mean, you, that means you're, you're, on, you're an intellect. You're smart. Yeah, you, you should ask questions. It's not you shouldn't just fun. blindly not... believe everything. Yeah. And you, like, if with I go ghost hunting and stuff, it's just like, we're debunking 99% of the stuff. But then there's stuff that you can't, and you're just like, okay. And that's the best part. And that's the best part. When you're part. like, I don't know if I believe it, and then someone's like, yeah, shit. And you're like, oh, <laughs> Just a heads up, uh, these stories definitely are scary, but n nobody gets harmed in any of these stories. So they're all just a spooky. Uh, but we are going to put some trigger warnings up uh, in front of some based on certain things that it alludes to or there's close calls of. Here we go. This is titled Shower Prank. Uh, it comes from Paranormal Encounters. I am a strong believer that if you acknowledge something, it gets stronger. This happened to me months ago, and I just want to put it out in the world in hopes that it takes away the temptation to bring this up to my fiance all the time. One evening after work, I went to take a shower. I will admit that I had not slept the night before, so I was incredibly tired. I had my music as loud as it would go on my phone so I could hear it over the rushing water. About midway through, my music volume lowered to silent. I turned around to open the curtain to find out why, when my fiance pulled back the curtain a little bit, stuck his head in the shower, and grinned at me. I looked at him with confusion, and he popped his head back out before turning the light off and closing the bathroom door. To say I was furious is an understatement. I really don't like certain kinds of pranks, call me lame if you want, and one involving wet and slippery darkness just hit me hard with how tired I was. I immediately stepped out of the shower, flipped the light back on, the switch is right between the shower and the door, and stormed out of the bathroom without even getting a towel. I found my fiance sitting his at his computer with his headset on and absolutely laid into him. He had this confused and panicked expression as I asked why he would think that was funny, telling him to never do that again. 
He asked me to explain what he did wrong, which made me angrier. But when he said he had been playing since before I even went to shower, I believed him. To begin with, he hates pranks even more than I do. We've been together for six years and he's never so much as jumped out from a corner to startle me. And I've never seen him mess with anyone else. He is not the type of person that would even think to do something like that. But I was so tired that none of that sank in before I lost it on him. Along with simply not being the type, the setup of the apartment would have made it impossible for him to get back to the office without me hearing him. Between the bathroom and the office, there is a noisy metal baby gate, the living room, the kitchen, and another noisy metal baby gate in the office doorway. I would have also heard his footsteps on the wooden floors if he were moving uh, as quickly as he would have needed to. I've thought about it over and over. It's the creepiest thing that has ever happened to me, and I want to write it off as being uh, sleep deprived, but I had to turn my music back up. I had to flip the, uh, the light switch back on. I had to open the bathroom door to get out. We leave it open when we shower because it's just the two of us, and the bathroom has poor ventilation for steam. I made him check the apartment for anyone else, even though I know what he looks like, and that face was him. I asked him to stay in the bathroom with me until I washed the conditioner out of my hair. I think about this every time I shower now. We've had some random things happen before that. Stuff moving to places we know we didn't put it. Sounds we couldn't rationalize forever. Um, the, the motion sensor triggering on the cameras over nothing, but nothing near this level before them. I don't know what I'm looking for here other than a moment to wring out my brain. But if anyone has had a similar experience to this misery, I would welcome some company. Damn. Not keep us up at night. I'm destroyed yeah. after that. I just picture a man uh, in the mirror. Like, <laughs> Here's Johnny. <laughs> like that's honestly, that's. I think showering. That's scary. I mean, have you ever seen the movie Psycho? Yeah. Like, what? <laughs> that's crazy. You got a haunted house, miss. Also, baby gates. <laughs> they have a I lot know. of baby gates. <laughs> they have a lot of baby like, gates, but do you have, have a baby? The, I was the really level, sure. Yeah, they never mentioned a baby, which is almost makes them scarier than yeah. whatever demon is in their house. Yeah, I also own. like how there's multiple levels of baby gates, like yeah. Area 51 yeah. for their baby. Yeah. <laughs> there's a swipe card. Yeah, yeah. we have high security because our baby is... <laughs> Maybe it was the baby. Yeah. Um, was it the baby just going like... <laughs> yeah, right? Looks just the dad, has the exact dad's face. That's terrifying. Um, scary. Super scary. What are your initial impressions on what that would be? Do you think it's a ghost? What's hard is that if she was sleep deprived, mm -hmm. sleep deprived, fine. But if she has to turn on her phone yeah. and turn the light back on. Yeah, yeah those and the do. door. It's like so many things where it's like, okay, probably... I don't There's know. There's something paranormal going on. I, I'm of the belief of like, look, if we have, we can only assume that they're telling the truth. The There's yeah. the added element of, I'm being honest here, as a skeptic, yeah. when I read these types of stories on Reddit, my initial impression is always like, well, I don't know who this person is and yeah. they could just write a story Embellish. and get karma and that's, so but yeah. taking it as it is and I, you know, we hear, this is not some insane story I've never heard anything yeah. like it. Yeah. Uh, Hearing it as it is, yeah, my initial impression is, oh, you were tired, but your phone turning the volume down and the lights going off at the same time, so that's not an electrical issue. And, and the, the door, door shutting. Oh. There's just, there's a lot of elements happening at once. And his face. <laughs> and, and his literal his face. face. That's wild. Wait, um, is he lying though? She's saying it's impossible for him yeah. to get back upstairs. Yeah. I don't think that's the case. If look, yeah. the scariest scenario here, in my opinion, is if he did it and he's that weird. Yeah, to, like <laughs> your husband. Because if a he psycho. if he just really silently, because she had to get out of there and it was dark and stuff, he yeah. had time to, like, slowly it make his way up the and then but do the it. But the baby gate. But the if loud he, baby gate. If, <laughs> if this husband who never pranks her decided to suddenly pull an insane prank like this. Yeah. And, Lie to her mess and her up. mess make her believe this was real. Yeah. Then, yeah, that that's also very implausible. So, I mean, what are, what are we talking Any about? Update? Poltergeist, uh, ghost. Um, no, uh, but we have some comments here. Have you ever looked into the history of the place, like who lived there before? Oh yeah yeah yeah. yeah, yeah. Op Got responded. It. Uh, it was originally a factory for making pots and pans. Uh, her unit only had one previous group of tenants that destroyed the place, but nobody died. Someone else said, 
Hello friend, sounds like you have a mimic on your hands. Yeah. I highly recommend a spiritual cleanse of the house. If you would like traditional methods to cleanse your home and establish protection to prevent reoccurrence, please let me know. I am an interfaith minister, so please let me know if you practice a particular religion and I can give you advice to suit. There's tons of things you can do to get rid of annoying pests like the one you have. Isn't that creepy? It's like it's a rodent. Yeah, Just I almost mimic. think this guy, this person scares me more yeah, than right? whatever mimic. But yeah, that's ah, a yes, thing. I can help you. Hello, that's, Fred. That's a thing. That's a thing. Like what? at Mimics. my girlfriend's house, Selena Spooky Boo, who's also like a YouTuber, she her house is really haunted and we've ghost hunted oh. there before. But there's been so many instances where I see her and, and oh. I'm like talk to her or like I've I, and it's not her because she's Stop. in a different place. Yeah, like there's those kind of like mimicry. Why do like they ghosts. say that they have mimics? A Reddit user pulled up the definition. Usually it's a demonic or negative spirit that mimics people you love or are comfortable with so that specific energy can gain your trust and then attach itself to you. Mm -hmm. um, oh. mm -hmm. okay. We did like a whole seance to get rid of it and everything. It was intense. And? Did you? And I, yeah, I think so. It hasn't shown up since we did it and that was like a couple <gasps> months ago. Did anything happen during the seance? Mm, no. No, nothing like of note. It was just really creepy. The mimic's like, no! That's what we do on no. Tuesdays. Anyway. I, um, I love that, light as a feather, stiff as a board. Yeah, we like walked around our whole property with salt, we like saged everything, we lit a fire, we like threw stuff in the fire. It was I wild. I love that shit. Yeah. You, we should do stuff I like would that. love to. <laughs> There's the added level of uh, ghosts and then demons. Yeah, that's a whole other thing. As a whole nother level. Super scary. Super scary. Um, uh, you know, uh, this is the type of thinking that I have, like, right? If, if, this, if this happened to me, right? Yeah. So where I'm like, okay, I can't deny that I witnessed this thing. But I'm also, like I said, I try to believe everything. I also, I used to have this theory that I would think about when I was a teenager and I was really into this stuff of, you know, what if time, you know, it's the true detective thing, time is a flat circle. But if all time is happening at once and there's a multiverse of dimensions that are all happening at the same time, what if yeah. you are just seeing another, yeah. like time folding in on itself and yes. you're just seeing an image from the past or the future yeah. or a different dimension, oh. whatever, like there's just like, or you know, there's, there's other things that things, what if they could collide? I don't know, I'm not a scientist. What I'm saying is a stupid guy thinking about this stuff. Yeah. But that's where my brain goes yeah. as opposed to, it's a ghost, it's like, oh, oh. but there's also, an infinite possibility, yeah. po infinite amount of possibilities for stuff. Yeah, is Let's get my belief. Neil deGrasse Tyson on this podcast, man. Yeah, let's get it. <laughs> no, no, but it's true. That's kind of like what the I feel like the afterlife is kind of like. It's like a different dimension. Yeah, so it's like, that's very valid. Thin places, right, where people believe that spirits are always around. Yeah, you're just like maneuvering. Some or are just trying out. to like figure out how to get up, like to where they're supposed to be. That makes me feel actually more calm when I think of that, me but too. that's not what my first brain thinks. My right. first brain is like, okay, yeah, someone has yeah. unfinished Somebody's business. Somebody's trying to infiltrate my body. Mimics. Mimics. Like, I automatically go to the scary thing Yeah, me too, first. me too. There's a lot of discussion here and someone sources uh, cited uh, the Australian Department of Climate Change, Electricity, Gas and Water that um, carbon monoxide can often be uh, an explanation that people use for stuff like this. They go, mm. inhalation of low levels of carbon monoxide can cause headache, dizziness, lightheadedness, and fatigue. Exposure to higher concentrations of carbon monoxide can cause sleepiness, hallucinations, convulsions, collapse, loss of consciousness, and death. Mm -hmm. um, another source says, like, if you or others in your home ever experience ghostly symptoms, you should have your furnace, oven, and or other gas appliances inspected by a professional. Now, I think, I'm of the opinion of, like, Get that stuff checked out just in Automatic case. Automatically. For sure. Just in case. And then if it keeps happening, it's like, well, we ruled that out. Yeah, exactly. Like, Hello, I'm exactly. having ghostly feelings. Can you <laughs> come check out <laughs> my yes, furnace? Yes. They come in with sage yeah. and then. Come check turn. out my refrigerator, <laughs> please. Well, that's a wild one. Crazy. Uh, mimic. All right. That's scary. Yeah. That first one is. Next one. Let's see what it is. <laughs> Am I the asshole for not caring or saying that my apartment is haunted to a new roommate? <laughs> okay. Hilarious. Oh boy, where do I even begin with this one? Mm. First off, this post isn't about the science or lack thereof of what the paranormal is or isn't. I want to be somewhat distanced from that. I've lived here for about two years. One night, a couple months into my lease, when I was about, uh, about to fall asleep on the couch, I heard what sounded like a mechanical tune from a children's toy chest for like four to five seconds. 
a jack-in-the-box toy would be a fair explanation. I was half asleep and just attributed it to a dream-induced auditory hallucination or a sound from the TV. It occurred again another night, which got me interested. I wondered if it was something coming from the outside since a window was ajar. Maybe another apartment, but I don't hear any other external sounds in this old, thick concrete block, not a peep. The third time around, I froze in my steps and the top of my mind went to echoes from the past. I mean, this is just f***ing cool and sort of sweet. I can't characterize it very well. It's tin-like, but sounds like it's neither near or far. It sounds like it's on the floor, but under a thick blanket, like an ice cream truck is around the corner or something, occurs about once every other week. For me, it's just like, well, I guess that happened type thing. <laughs> After the first few instances of this, was I supposed to be freaked out or, or something? There's also a few other types of sounds, like a split second of a drawer or cabinet opening, thudding. Can't say I really care that much. Sometimes I don't even remember it until I'm reminded of it. I decided to reduce costs by getting a roommate a few months ago. I met someone for coffee and we hit it off. No apparent issue as far as uh, ability to pay or owning too much stuff, no pets, agreeable demeanor, etc. And move in day was a breeze. But as it turns out, well, let's just say some people are more sensitive than others. I received a call one evening and she was hysterical and had barricaded herself in her room. I rushed home. She said she was in the kitchen minding her own business when all of a sudden she was startled by what sounded like thudding, which of course was followed by Casper's silly toy playing ass. The immediate impression was that of an intruder and she panicked and ran to her room. Her anxiety was so bad that I had to take her out to a bar to have some beers and help take the edge off. I apologize that I didn't tell her about it. It, slipped, it just slipped my mind, really. But did I have to apologize? Informed her she's free to leave without paying or accept some lowered rent. She just kept looking at me like I'm some asshole running a house of horrors while I just kept shrugging and downing Coors banquets. The verdict was not the asshole. That's so funny. Just like, oh God, no, it's just Casper. Yeah, yeah. It's, like, just, a, it's just a music box. I don't know. I don't, just, to look. me, that makes me even more scared because then it's like, oh, the, your your place is haunted, yeah. yo. Like, yeah, but I don't know. Like, can you imagine just like going to like a place to be like, hey, I'm I'm interested in being your roommate, and they're just like, okay, but like this place is haunted. Like, yeah, you wouldn't. Like, you would never no. get a roommate. But this yeah. guy truly, <laughs> this person truly doesn't care. No, it sounds like they're just like yeah. Which whatever. is sometimes the way to go about that stuff. And the ghost is clearly just doing that. It's thing. yeah. It's not like the hard. ghost is upstairs like. Yeah. <laughs> he's just practicing. Okay, first of all, he, this person's like an author. The way they're explaining stuff. A jar, door, a jar. I clocked it. Sounded that. like it was. The sound was on the ground under a heavy blanket. Yeah, under what? a yeah. heavy blanket. It's not near. It's not far. It's an ice cream truck. It's not here. It's not there. It's, it's not anywhere. Ice cream truck around the corner. <laughs> yeah. Sips Coors Banquet. Yes, yes, that's yes, 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 yes. Literally, <laughs> yeah. I like the effort they put into this. Uh, an improv teacher saying. was like, "You got to be more specific." He's like, yeah, "Got it." Got Coors <laughs> Banquet. <laughs> Near five. <laughs> it sounded like it was, it was in the past. It was a memory from yeah, the past. Yeah, echoes from the past. Echoes, echoes from the past. This, this like, was well written. I was really appreciating this. This is Broy Stephen King. It, yeah. I was gonna say Stephen King. Echoes from the past. But I think he, his place is probably haunted. Yeah. Like, there's just there's sometimes um. Uh, what's it called? Uh, like just ghosts that kind of are on the same schedule every day that kind of do the same thing. Yeah. I forget what it's called. That's right where now. I really believe in, like I said, of like oh. it's it's some yeah. event and uh. time and it's just replaying like a broken record. Residual. Yep, I was gonna, uh, yeah, I was gonna be residual. residual yes, residual it's like haunting. a residual haunting. So it's literally where a ghost is kind of, they don't even really know that they're in the afterlife and they kind of like go through this. This is also in Selena's house. She has this man that kind of like walks through the same areas <gasps> like in, in her house. Whoa. And it's really weird. Sometimes you'll see him, sometimes you won't, but it's always in like the same area or like the same. You've seen him? It's, yeah, it's so weird. Like I sound crazy. Can I go with you? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, come to, it's in Ontario, like in the middle of the woods. It's oh, the creepiest place okay. ever, but it's good. Wow. It's fun. Yeah, it's really interesting. And we've been to other houses where um, I was just at a place with Sam and Colby, who are ghost hunting oh, YouTubers. Yeah, yeah. And uh, uh, Colby, Selena, and I saw Sam walking with the person that was taking them through the house to do the tour. And we both all saw a girl in a, in a blue sweater walk past with them. And they're like, oh, who, like, who else is in the house? Like, we, we thought it was just you two. And they're like, yeah, it is just us. And we're like, because all of us saw, and we we're like, like I've only had it where I've only seen it, but the, it was crazy. When you all but that's supposed it? to be a residual one too. Yeah, it's crazy. So residual, so they don't, they don't know that they're dead. They are just walking. They're kind of going through their 
third their day. day it's and interesting. They, oh, yeah. at least that's what I've interpreted it as. Oh. Do you so. think it's wow. that maybe like, yeah, they're, they're still catching up to the idea that they're dead mm -hmm. and maybe time just works so different that you, for them, maybe that for that ghost, it's, it's only like five seconds, but yeah. for us, we see it as yeah, like time. It doesn't oh, like, matter. Oh, they were there for a hundred years. It's like actually, it just took them like five minutes. Yeah, but in their plane of existence, yeah, it, it's it goes weird. By so quick. Could so you ever weird. like talk, communicate with them? Well, yeah. if a yeah. residual ghost, maybe. Uh, yeah, no, I mean, we, yeah, we have, we have like, and you can talk to them in like various different ways. Like we have like equipment and that kind of stuff, but then like Selena and I kind of we do like automatic writing and that kind of thing where we like get into like this really deep trance and just like let wow. words come into our head and like talk through that. Whoa. It's wild. <laughs> do you want to see cool ghost hunting videos? I do. Check out my channel. <laughs> I'm dead serious, I do. Okay, good. I'm really into it. Yeah, that's what that sounds like. So we have comments here. So the verdict was not the asshole. Yeah, I, not the I, asshole. Don't, I don't think so. What? No. You... Do you think uh, someone is obligated to let you know if they've heard spooky sounds? Mm -hmm. I really think they wouldn't get a renter. I, I don't think they would, and it also, it, there's been no danger involved. He hasn't yeah. gotten robbed or and anything. And he hasn't been scared. And that, they, no. Scared. I, he hasn't, and he, he also doesn't know what it is. Yeah. He, he's just been like, I've heard this stuff, but like. Yeah, and some people happened. are more sensitive to it than other people. It's, it's true. Like, I, it's it's true. I've definitely walked into a house and been like, um, yeah. what is happening in there? And they're like, oh yeah, you can feel that too. Right. Yeah, I felt it when I moved in. I'm like, yeah. I don't, I can't even breathe in yeah, here. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. So. Yeah. You're not the asshole. Um, some comments here. Not the asshole, they are renting. It's their job to ask about the apartment. It's no different from a broken shower door or not working AC. If you showed them their room and they agreed to everything, then it's their fault for not asking. I mean, you don't ask, is this house haunted too often? But a simple, is it quiet at night, is the normal question. <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, yeah, that's fair. Someone said, light, you're not the asshole. While a haunting is not something you must disclose, it is something that will get you a pissed off tenant. Yeah. You probably need to disclose that your building is old and it makes weird noises sometimes so that no, prospective fair. tenants can be aware of the noises and won't freak out on you. And lastly, we have someone who said, not the asshole, I believe in ghosts, but that's not something you are required to disclose when subletting because there's no specific way to qualify that. And beyond that, you sound like you genuinely didn't think it was real until someone else experienced it. Mm -hmm. Here's some woo-woo advice. Mm -hmm. Say out loud when you hear noises, go away, you aren't welcome here. Mm -hmm. And here's some practical advice. Don't pay her anything. Just tell her if she's not happy, she can depart with a month's notice. I, when I was younger, I was very, I was very scared of ghosts. I was like, I was like, whoa, like, um, but I was still like a little skeptical, but I really was like scared of it. Nowadays, I'm more scared of people. Fair. Um, like if I heard a noise, if I heard a noise yeah, yeah, and I was yeah. like, oh shit, someone broke into our house. Yeah. And then someone's like, no, it's actually a ghost. I'd be like, I'd still be scared, but yeah. I'd be like, okay, a ghost okay. is a person without their armor. Yeah, exactly. So, True. Yeah, like skeleton. I'll be a ghost one day, yeah. and <laughs> and maybe I'll be more powerful. I don't know. <laughs> but so I've never experienced any sort of supernatural stuff uh, myself, except for mm -hmm. this one little blip of time. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, like I said, I'm a skeptic. I'm not saying, oh, this was a ghost, but I will say the weird shit that happened. Okay. So. I had, it was in the span of quite literally, I wanna say like a month. Mm -hmm. And I was about 18 or 19, I was living by myself in this apartment that I'd lived in for a couple of years and nothing had happened. And it's just in Burbank, California. Like yeah. not, nothing, I don't think it was an old building, it was fine. Uh, then I had a few weird instances with birds in that apartment, like I, I worked, I, I lived, my bedroom was in the loft and I had a big gi gigantic sliding glass oh. door right next to my desk and I'm, I'm sitting there typing and uh, suddenly one day a bird literally hits right where like my head is yeah. and I, I it, like slammed right there. And which is strange cause it's, it's not like, it, there's, it kind of like is in a divot. Like it wasn't, right. it wasn't like, like a bird, a, a bird, a bird couldn't just like make right. a straight right. shot to right. it. It was kind of strange the angle of it, but it happens. Sure. Uh, but it, I look over and this bird's on its back. I think it's dead and I'm like, oh shit. I was like, oh, oh my God. And then I, I forget what happened. I looked away and all of a sudden I looked, I, it, it eventually got back up and just kind of looked at me <laughs> and it was just kind of looking at me for a bit. <laughs> and then it flew off and I was like, oh, God. okay, that's weird. But birds are weird. And I also, <laughs> and this is another thing yeah. that is also, <laughs> Hello? oh, this is also another thing that's completely does happen, but it, this is the only time it happened mm. to me. I was also one time out on my my patio right next to my sliding glass door, and uh, 
I'm standing out there and it's during the day and I see a hummingbird a ways off and I see it flying around and all of a sudden I see it stop and it's it's dozens of yards away. It's okay. far away. I spot it. I'm like, whoa. Yeah. And all of a sudden it flies straight at me <laughs> and it no. stops here. Oh, and I and I'm just looking at it and it's it did like a perfect circle around me to the point where I was like it's covering like my helicopter. ears because I was like I was like is it so my loud. ears are flowers or something <gasps> and it flies around it stops and it flies away and I was like that's a weird bird whisperer bird what uh, birds were weird in this short little span so th there, those are the only two weird bird instances and then I had other weird instances uh, I one night uh, it's late at night it's like 11 or midnight I'm in my room in the loft and I open up my sliding glass door and as I'm, as I'm walking out, I hear a coin flip, and it sounds like a coin flip coming from right here. And then a dime lands <gasps> right in front of me. Oh! And then I, oh. I remember being like this, I remember just going, and just shutting my door and going back in. And I, I was, uh, I, was, I, was I, I remember going back out eventually and looking up at the roof and being like, the ch chit, and then, um, I remember looking at the, I, I, I had the dime for a bit, I looked at the year, it was from the, I want to say it was from the 80s, uh, but because uh, I was like, I was like, well, maybe the time. But but at this point, my best explanation was that the dime got like wedged somehow in like the door as I was opening it and mm -hmm. like caused. But uh, being honest, the flip sound like uh, I heard the coin it's flip ting. like from that region. So that was weird, and I was just like, oh, uh, dude. And then. The last thing that happened, and I people I got are gonna possessed. there. I am, I am, I am like this guy because I am very much like okay. Well, I don't know. Uh, I was in my apartment by myself at night, watching TV. The lights were all on. I, I have the main living space, the kitchen. There's a spiral staircase to the loft, Fine. and um, the sliding glass door is up there. And and I'm um, I'm watching TV one night, and then uh, just. Uh, very loud man yell just just starts going and it's going for a bit it's 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 it starts it started off more like, like a stereotypical like ooh but it started off like a like a like a ooh like and i mean like blasting in my apartment and i remember it going on for so long yeah. so at first i didn't really know uh, yeah. it's it came from <laughs> that direction so my front door was here it came from that direction okay. i have a window there that's shut but it's it's like Sounds twelve like feet room? twelve feet down to the the part of the patio below. Okay. Oh. And so it goes on. The yell goes on long enough that I stand up and I'm looking around <laughs> oh and I'm like, God, dude. like try to figure out where it's like, coming from. Does it from. sound like it's from inside? I was like, maybe it's from the loft area. I at first thought my window was open. Okay. Someone was yeah. looking in the window, but Naturally. there nobody okay. was. The window was shut. And okay. also, they would have to be twelve feet tall to right. look into that, or have oh. a ladder. Oh. And then I thought oh. all this stuff, and uh, I, my, the TV was on, but this blasted over the TV, and um, yeah, I uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, but I have so I, I sat down on my couch and I didn't move for two hours, and then <laughs> I eventually, and I mean, like I said, all the lights are on. I don't see anything. I eventually go up to my loft, and nothing, nothing. I'm and like, you go to bed. I That's I went to bed wild. downstairs in the because I just yeah and um, yeah that was that was and I to this day don't know like explain the dime that's crazy so the, the dime. dime I got like chill yeah because I'd forgotten about the dime I just remembered that that's that also happened but then after that uh, nothing and I've yeah. never had anything since the, the dime is very it's like. Uh, ghosts use like dimes, so like when my specifically dimes. Yeah, specifically Chris, dimes. Chris like when my like, Grammy passed away, we like had a conversation too, and she she said that she'll leave dimes or whatever. But that's like a common thing. So every time if I'm I've been like cleaning my room or, or like cleaning my car, or if I go into a random hotel room, there'll just be like a dime on the floor. It's like in the most obvious like there would be just a dime like sitting there or whatever. Stop. So I'm just like, oh, it's my Grammy or whatever. But that's like a thing with like a family member of yours might have been like. Saying like, giving you a nod, giving you a hey. I, I don't think at the time that I'd Why had dime? anyone pass. Does it doesn't have to be like anybody like recent or whatever. Why dime? Like, I'm not I'm not positive on what the whole history and is. There, there's, it's there's, like it's with, more than just your because you're saying you're. It's not just mine. Like, yeah, it's like with Selena, like with like a couple other people I know. Like they, it's just like a widely kind of like. Known Whoa! Thing. Look, I'm being honest. I didn't 
know that about dimes. No. Yeah. Oh no. I, so I'm, I, I'm, I look. I I'm, I'm, I'm being honest. I know I'm you a, said it. I'm a like... skeptic, but I'm also not trying to. <laughs> that's like, cool. Disprove it. That's cool. Cool. Next story. You're haunted, bro. I, well, I was for like a month. Yeah. Now I'm not. Because I haven't had that. That's, that was a long time ago. Maybe it's that dormant. Guy was Maybe there. since we talked about it, it'll come back. You'll just hear it tonight. <laughs> <laughs> and then dimes are just like. <laughs> 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 Dime ghost. <laughs> All right, next story. This comes from the subreddit Let's Not Meet, uh, which is a very spooky subreddit. Uh, a lot of scary shit. Okay. My brother saw a ghost as a kid. Two decades later, I realized what he actually saw. Ooh. Ooh. Okay. I was about seven years old. My brother was about 10. It was well past our bedtime when our mom w woke up off the couch and took uh, put us both to bed. Our dad worked construction out of town back then, so it was often just us three at the house for weeks at a time. Up the stairs and to the immediate right was our parents' bedroom. Going left put you in the middle of a hallway. Taking another left down that hallway led to my brother's room. The opposite end was my room, which was also across the hall from our upstairs bathroom. At either end of the hallway are windowed doors we always kept locked and rarely used. The door on my end led to a balcony overlooking our front yard, and the door on my brother's end opened to our back porch. The house kind of leans into a small hill. My brother and mom both had a habit of waking up in the middle of the night to use the bathroom. I only knew this because I always, uh, I was always a light sleeper, and they just couldn't help flushing uh, with the door wide open. This night, however, my brother stopped on his way to bed and came back towards the bathroom, saying, I'm gonna try to pee before I go to bed. The past few nights, I've been too afraid to walk to the bathroom. I keep seeing a man wearing stripes at the end of the hallway. I don't know if my mom wrote it off as my brother telling ghost stories to try to scare me or if she was already half asleep and didn't catch it, but she didn't react at all to my brother's confession. I, on the other hand, was terrified by it. Yeah. The fear of seeing a ghost like that at the end of the hallway or through the windows is the reason I started running from the stairs to my bedroom at night. Mm -hmm. Years later, when I was about 18, my mom and I were having a conversation in her car about a dog uh, we had for a very short time when I was little. We were sharing stories about Max's tendency towards destroying my shoes and other unruly behaviors when my mom blurted out, do you remember that time I opened the front door for the cops and Max ran inside to the kitchen and started tearing open the big bag of dog food we had? This really caught me by surprise because in all the years I lived in that house, we never once called the cops, uh, parenthesis, gun owner family in a quiet rural uh, West Virginia neighborhood, etc. I asked her what she was talking about and she looked equally surprised as if she had just revealed something by accident. Oh, that's right. I never told you because you were too young at the time. One night I woke up hearing noises outside my window and when I looked I saw a man staring into my bedroom. She went on to describe how turning on the lights caused him to take off running and how she grabbed my dad's pistol before calling the cops. <laughs> I can't remember all the details I gave them when they showed up. Tall white male wearing a striped shirt and jeans, short dark, dark hair, something like that. They said it matched the description of a man they were looking for in the area. It turns out he had escaped from jail on a murder charge. Now, I know it sounds so obvious hearing those two stories back to back, but it wasn't until a few years ago in my mid-20s that I pieced together that my brother had unknowingly warned us about a murderer who spent multiple nights casing our home. He was frogging? Stank. Frogging, frogging is stank. is terrifying. Yes, of course you know what frogging I is. I know what frogging is. It's when uh, people There's break a into- movie about it. Yes, there is, and it's I See You. Helen Watch Hunt. it, really good. Really Helen scary. Great. She's fantastic. Frogging is when somebody <laughs> sticks into your house and they stay in like a vacant room or like an attic, while, and then they usually like come downstairs while you're sleeping and they take your, your food, food from your fridge. There's like a lot of creepy hidden footage. They film like, themselves. Yeah, it's crazy. It's f***ed up. But that's- so scary. That's so scary. That's, yeah, that's different. Um, <gasps> different. <laughs> yeah, uh, some comments here. I've been on Reddit for too long. I really thought you were going to tell us that your mom was cheating with the guy in stripes and your brother saw him in the house. Yeah. That would have been Someone better. else said, wait, was he in your house? Since your brother said he was at the end of the hallway, not in a window. Uh, OP said, it had to be through the window. I definitely remember him saying at the end of the hallway because yeah. it painted a horrible image for me as a kid, mm. but it must have just been poor wording. Also, I detailed the layout of the hallway and the doors, but forgot to mention there's no way up to the balcony on my end other than through, the, through that door. Mm. This means my brother had to see him through the door uh, right next to his room on his <sighs> way back from the bathroom. I say this uh, all with uncertainty Chills. because I've never actually told my brother the story or our mom told me. I just asked him if he remembered the man in stress 
stripes, but he said he only vaguely remembers. He has an awful memory. Recently, <laughs> I've been wanting to tell him the full story to see if it jogs his memory, which is why I posted it here. I'll post an update here if that happens. Um, the mom just never. That's wild. Addressing to me. that, like you were too young to know a man broke into the house. Yeah, right. Uh, a murder. And I'm just a, never a gonna. Escaped oh, convict. Sorry, I forgot that a guy tried to murder us all. Also, <laughs> I grabbed a pistol. Why do uh, I feel like moms hold on? Like they carry the world on their shoulders. They sometimes do. they're just like they do. They're like, who did she even have to talk to about that? I guess. Jesus Christ. Yeah, because, the, because the husband was gone. That's true, but like, if my mom didn't tell me that, I'd be like, how dare you take away that, that my like life lore from me? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I've missed out on so many fucking stories. Such a stories. cool story, I could have told it. So many story? parties I wasn't invited to. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, all right, we have an update here. Ooh. Ooh. Hello. Oh wow, sorry for the lack of updates so far. I've been super busy slash sick this week and totally didn't expect this story to get as much attention as it did. I spoke with my mom and brother separately about the stories. First, my mom corrected my memory about what she found out from the police. It wasn't someone that had escaped. Rather, the description fit a suspect in an ongoing murder investigation. I'm honestly not sure if that makes it better or worse. Also, my brother already knew about my mom's story. He still can't remember much about how he saw the person, but it sounds like it scared him as much as the story did for me when we, when we were kids. He said he's probably suppressing the memory and I can't tell mm -hmm. if he's joking about that or not. Mm. My brother did remind me of a piece of the story I didn't know was related. For the week after my mom called the cops, our older cousin brought a shotgun and stayed with us until our dad returned. Of course, at the time, I didn't know why he was staying with us. I mentioned this to my mom and she told me a detail I didn't know. Our cousin, who was sleeping in my brother's room, set up a makeshift alarm system with some string and bells on the door in case anyone came around again. A string, some bells, and a shotgun, affordable home security in the 90s, I guess. Stop. The funny part about my cousin's makeshift alarm story is that it led to my mom revealing another detail in my life I never knew about. For as long as I can remember, that door, which was replaced several years ago, had a rope loop of Christmas bells around the knob. <gasps> the sound of those bells is burned to my memory because they would jingle anytime someone opened the door. My mom would always check that door before going to bed. <gasps> Wow. Dude, this is wild. Whoa, he just see, unlocked his I love, ass. See, love this, this Home story, Alone setup they got too. going on. Though. This that's is, great. This is what I'm talking about. I, like, ghosts? that's awesome. That's an awesome story. <laughs> How dare she not tell him earlier. That's awesome. That's good lore. You're so I, right. That's so scary, though. Like, oh, yeah. Oh, I'd rather it be a ghost. Yeah, absolutely. I'd rather an army of ghosts. Yeah, a poltergeist. Than yeah, some absolutely. Guy. Can you imagine waking up and having someone staring out your yeah. window? Good thing the cousin, the cousin's like, I got you. Yeah, he's like, Chess, no, cheese, okay, Christmas. Let's yeah. go. <laughs> All right, Santa Claus is coming to town. I, don't worry. I watched. It's the '90s. I just watched Home Alone. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I literally. We're exactly. good. Uh, wow. Okay, next one. That's oh wild. my god. My this is from relationship advice. Oh, okay, great. Okay. Spooky. I'm not in one, but I'll tell you what to do. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I'm also not a ghost, but I'll tell you what to do. Uh, or am I? My boyfriend claims he's been seeing strange things in the house after he moved in with me, but I think he's playing me. My, uh, this is a 33-year-old woman. My boyfriend, who's 36, has been wanting me to sell my deceased father's house so we could move to Florida and purchase a house in the area that he's always wanted to live in. The reason I put quotes on we is because he's basically wanting me to buy that house in Florida with my own money after I sell my father's house. But I already made it clear that I have no plans to move to Florida because I have no family or friends there. And I won't sell my father's house because it's my childhood home and I hold it in and uh, its precious memories dear. He kept bringing it up till I demanded he respect my decision uh, and no longer mention it. I'm a nurse, I work long shifts and overnight shifts throughout the week, but my boyfriend has a regular office job. He moved in with me weeks ago, and literally days after moving in, he started claiming there were weird and abnormal things happening in the house. I asked him to explain, and he said he keeps hearing footsteps when he's alone in the house, keeps finding his stuff rearranged, keeps experiencing a strange feeling of something or someone watching him from behind, stuff disappearing and reappearing in other places, and hearing animal sounds that he can't specify. I couldn't relate because I've lived in this house for years and never have I ever seen or experienced anything that was out of the ordinary. He kept insisting there are strange things happening and I'm probably 
completely unaware or haven't been paying close attention due to my exhaustion and overworked mind. To give him the benefit of the doubt, I decided to stay up all night with him after getting off work. I was completely tired and exhausted and still nothing happened. I told him he needed to check his medication or see a therapist for what he's experiencing, as it might be a mental issue, but he still insisted the house is the problem. Friday night at 11 p.m., he called while I was at work. He was freaking out telling me he was at a friend's place and asked me to meet him there. I went over there and, and was met by him lashing out. He looked shaken up, saying that he had had enough of this, of this psychological torture and that he was never going to go back to that house after what just happened. I asked what happened, and he said he was on his phone, then fell asleep on the couch when he saw a human-shaped figure with long hair covering the face standing over him. My reaction was just to stare at him as he, was on, as he went on and explain that he saw it even when his eyes were closed and he thought it was a dream, but after he opened his eyes, that thing was standing still. He said he froze and couldn't move except to try and pray by doing the cross sign, but something kept yanking his hand repeatedly, preventing him from praying. I asked what happened after that, and he said he wasn't sure because he felt like he was going unconscious as he no longer felt his arms, then passed out but woke up again and freaked out, grabbing his jacket and car keys and running out. I asked if, it, I asked if that was it, and he looked at me grudgingly, asked if I really thought he was making this up. I just shrugged and said that it's weird because this never happened to me in all these years I've lived there. He attacked my statement, saying that I clearly have lived in that cursed house long enough that I've come to normalize the obvious weird shit that keeps happening. He went on and on about how scared and traumatized he felt at the time and kept saying it's my fault he experienced that. I said, now what? And he replied that he was letting me know uh, he will no longer step a goddamn foot in that house ever again. He suggested we rent an apartment if I still want us to live together. I told him I'm not moving out. He said, technically I'm not moving out, but we would just get some distance so that I could consider selling the house in a rational way rather than let my emotions decide. I said no, because I've already stated I had and have no intentions on selling my house, period. He didn't like it. And he said, uh, and said I clearly don't care about our relationship by refusing to compromise and take his concerns into consideration. He started fighting with me, calling me selfish and that I shouldn't be in a relationship since I always want things my, own, my way or no way. He added that he will be moving back with his mother for a while and will be waiting for my call if I choose to do the right thing and sell the house so we can start our life together as a couple. I haven't heard from him since then. I honestly think he's making all this stuff up because like I said, there's nothing wrong with the house I live in and I believe that he started this whole thing to get me to consider selling it, but I could just be wrong here. Okay, uh, it's obviously the father is like telling his daughter, this, this dude guy. sucks yeah. and he disrespects Literally. you, bye. Right? He's definitely getting haunted for good reason. I, maybe, does he have sleep paralysis? It sounds like sleep paralysis. So that's someone true. brought up sleep paralysis. Uh, that's what it sounds like. Uh, like it feels so, like I used to have that as like a kid and that's what, it, it feels so real. But like, I mean, maybe, maybe it was a ghost. I don't know, maybe that's what sleep paralysis is. But I don't know. it's like, you're like, like it, the way he's describing it, like being held down and can't like, like can't seeing a figure right over to top of you. Cross. Like, oh, oh. Um, <laughs> power of Christ compels you. Uh, we have uh, Stanford Health states, uh, sleep paralysis most commonly occurs when a person is either falling asleep or awakening. If an individual has awareness as the body enters or exits REM sleep, they may experience sleep paralysis. Sleep paralysis can last from several seconds to several minutes. Episodes of longer duration are typically uh, disconcerting and may even provoke a panic response. The paralysis may be accompanied by rather vivid hallucinations, which most people will attribute to being parts of dreams. Sleep paralysis can occur in otherwise normal sleepers and is surprisingly common in its occurrence and universality. Uh, it has also been linked to certain conditions such as increased stress, in, uh, excessive alcohol consumption, sleep deprivation, and narcolepsy. Is sleep paralysis always when you feel stuck? I think um, that's a common mo most, trait. Yeah, I mean, when okay. I had it, it was just like, you, you can't move, and then really scary shit's going on around you, basically. Oh, God, that's yeah. horrific. Yeah. Um, so I personally think the, this couple is not, they shouldn't be together. Yeah, I think this is a sign. Well, them. yeah, <laughs> ghost or not, he just, they just don't sound like yeah, They're just no, not listening to like, each other. She's like, up your meds. Yeah, she that's up your meds. Yeah, she's not like, really any better. Sell your dead dad's house. Yeah, Florida. 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 Yeah. Who? First of all, Florida. What? First of all, Florida. 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 What Who's are going you to Florida? Florida? What are you, 60? There's alligators. Uh, some comments here. <laughs> there are. <laughs> he just wants you to sell the house and move. Let him <laughs> yeah. move back in with his mom. It's sad that he values the money you could get from that house more than yeah. your attachment to it. In the end of the conversation, it definitely seems like he cared more about you selling the house than this 
ghost or whatever he claims to have seen. OP responded, yeah, I couldn't have said it better myself and it hurts seeing how little he thinks of me and the sentimental value the house has. By, by the way, Florida is his home state, mm -hmm. but his parents moved when he was younger, when he was a teenager. He talked about going back to settle down and start a small business. He says he has the money for his new business, but wants me to buy a house there after I get money from selling my father's house. But I refused. <laughs> yeah. And it's not like we both have different plans because we had an agreement, but he went back on it and started suggesting I sell my house so we could move. Yeah, this the, the pitch of, <laughs> You should sell your house so we can buy our new house. Yeah, so it's I already a red flag and just yeah. like get out. So get yeah, out. for him. The dad was protecting her. Yeah, I feel he, like I feel like that's part he of it. Scared too. him out of there. I think so. Yeah, someone said I would humor the idea that it's haunted that your dad is pulling out all the yeah. stops trying to get his the, get this idiot out of his house. Yeah, right. Um, because he did say he saw like a long haired that's figure, true. so it's not like he didn't say the like dad's I saw like, dad. I'll send this thing out. Yeah, all right. this thing. Send uh, Stacy out. And Stacy's like, it's my night off. Yeah. So, like, I haven't even done my hair. Yeah, get out there, put it in front of All your face. Right. It'll uh, be done. A lot of people are saying this sounds like textbook sleep paralysis hallucinations. Yeah, yeah that's what it sounds like. Um, and maybe the, uh, my opinion, maybe it's sleep paralysis, but the boyfriend sounds dumb and also selfish. Yeah. Yes. So it's just a bad combo. Yeah, and like, yep, I think so. Of things. Yeah. All right. This episode is brought to you by Mint Mobile. Signing your life away to a big wireless provider is a lot like being trapped on a roller coaster. Sure, it probably seemed really fun at first. They probably threw in a free new phone, all that sort of stuff. But over time, these thrills turned into uh, just awful stuff. You had insane bills, overages, surprise fees, and you started to want to just get off. Well, now you can get off the ride with Mint Mobile. For just $15 a month, you can get unlimited text, talk, and data. You're connected to the greatest 5G network in the country, and you get to keep your own phone, your own phone number, and they ship it right to your door for free. It comes in this nice little envelope. It's three easy steps, and then you're good to go. It's awesome. I'm about to do it myself. I'm excited to be saving money. And I know you probably like saving money too. To get your new unlimited wireless plan for just $15 a month shipped straight to your door for free, visit mintmobile.com slash pit reddit. That's mintmobile.com slash pit reddit. Cut your wireless bill down to $15 a month by going to mintmobile.com slash pit reddit. All right, back to the show. Next one, this comes from Let's Not Meet, which is... Oh God. Okay. Uh, Oof. Uh, trigger warning, uh, being followed, um, and a close encounter with a real person. Um, but you'll kind of see. This is titled, The Man with the Head Shears. Okay. Oh. Uh, it was in 2018, back when I lived in the suburbs of Paris. I've been playing Pokemon Go since its release, and I used to go out at night to play, always with my best friend on a voice call. <laughs> it was a night like any other, following my usual route. It was around 2 a.m., and I had already covered a good 1.2 miles. I found myself about one kilometer, about half a mile, away from home, standing near a Pokestop. I was catching what I could while talking to my friend, just like every night. It was a residential street with a few street lights, but quite dark as there was a field just behind it. After about five minutes, I noticed a man in his 30s on the opposite sidewalk, just a few meters away from me. He was holding head shears in his hand, and there was a pile of branches at his feet. I thought the man was just trimming the branches of his tree. However, when I described the scene to my friend, he said, you should leave right away. No one does gardening in the middle of the night. <laughs> Despite my friend's warning, I was so focused on Pokemon Go that I wanted to Ugh. capture all the Pokemon before leaving, so I stayed while keeping an eye on the man's actions. As I looked at the man, I realized he wasn't cutting any branches. He was only staring at me. He would occasionally move and hide behind a parked van nearby oh. while spying on me through the windows. Oh. However, he knew very well that I could see him, and I began to feel scared. Despite my friend's pleading for me to leave, I still hadn't caught all the Pokemon, <laughs> so I hesitated to go. The man continued his strange behavior, crossing over to my side of the street and hiding behind some bushes while staring at me. Then he went back to his pile of branches and stared at me again. Finally, I had enough. I decided to leave. I walked normally towards my home, trying not to show any fear. I had a straight path back home. My friend on the call asked me to check behind me in case the man was following me. Indeed, he was, still holding the head shears about 10 meters behind me. 
walk. I then made a left turn instead of going straight, even though it made my way longer. I wanted to be sure that he was following me and that it wasn't a coincidence. He continued to follow me. I picked up my pace, taking snaps uh, just in case something happened. When I reached the end of the street, I was out of breath but safe. There was no one behind me. I entered my yard, feeling relieved. Suddenly, a white car pulled up right in front, stopped, and the driver's window rolled down. It was the man with uh, his pruning shears. Now he knew where I lived. I rushed inside, locked everything, grabbed a kitchen knife, and waited until someone woke up so I could go to bed. Oh. There were no further incidents. Nobody believed me, so we checked the surveillance cameras at home, and unfortunately, I was right. Oh, oh. so this really did happen. Yeah. And then, but uh, no, no update, no nothing, so. Like what? Did he catch them all? <laughs> catch them all. Yeah, did you catch all the Pokemon? Yeah, like, did you fucking Yeah, this guy. All? I can't, it's just like. That's well, as a woman listening to that, you're just like, as what a woman the I think it's if a woman, if that was a woman, she'd be like, I'm sorry, I can't catch them all. There's yeah. a man with headshots. There's shares. a man and I'm sprinting home immediately. But since it's a boy, he's like, that's weird. He keeps hiding behind bushes. Yeah. Anyway, he's gotta find Yeah, right? Show. And he's like, <laughs> yeah. Like, what, it, what was he gonna do? Does he just bring branches with him and drop some so he can stare? <laughs> he's got a cover? That's his cover is the branches? He's like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> what if he was doing something illegal and he's like, this guy's filming me? And he's just like, this guy, this guy got footage. Yeah, like, I'm trying to think of- Does he know that I'm illegally trimming bushes? Yeah, like, the logic, yeah. Um, Scary. So, uh, comments, we have, a, we have a couple comments. So, did you ever catch the Pokemon you were willing to risk your <laughs> safety for? Go ahead and downvote me. I know everyone wants to know. By the way, so glad you are safe, and I really do mean this. Uh, OP responded, yes, I managed to catch them all. In my defense, <laughs> Thank God. I genuinely believed it was some guy trimming hedges in his garden that I had disturbed. Ugh. One should also consider the peculiarity of a guy, me, wan wandering alone in dark streets at 2 a.m., staring at his phone. After that incident, I stopped going out to play at night. Yeah, that's that's, that's so not good. So that guy trimming Hi. hedges was like, this guy was, uh, this guy was really scary. Yeah, maybe he thought he was scary. But why would he get in his car and follow him? Yeah, and not say anything. That's what makes me, my only explanation is that this guy maybe was like, did this guy take photos of me or something? Yeah. I need to go and like check. Yeah. Him. But why was he hiding behind cars? Why didn't well, he say, hey? Well, because after a while of staring at him, he, he then was like hiding, like, yeah. it sounds also like, because I, I, the only thing that reminds me of this is when I was younger, mm. uh, my friends and I would be out late at night and there would be adults that would like stare at you because you're a teenager, you're a young guy, they think you're up to trouble. Right. Yeah. So they often would be, and they would kind of like. Yeah, but would they follow you back to your yeah, house? Yeah, but not with, not with. They might, they <laughs> might. Oh, dude, Arizona, they would, they, they'd oh, be really? like, we need to make sure that these kids aren't doing oh. anything. Like, or they would just be like, Hey, okay. you're not you didn't you're not stealing shit. You're not mm. doing yeah. something bad. Oh my God, we did some crazy. We used to party in the woods. Yeah, same. We had bush parties. Oh, we had woods parties. Oh, that sounds better. Wow, bush part. Yeah, let's call it so woods. cool. No, you know what? That doesn't sound much better either. No bush. No we had forest parties. What if the bush what parties. if the hedge guy was just like, <laughs> I that gym is mine. Don't like I yeah I captured that Pokemon right? gym. Right? Yeah, yeah. Don't. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. Also, what if he's just waiting? He's like, he's like, oh, I'm waiting for you to walk up to me so I can be like, I love trimming hedges. Yeah. <laughs> 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 oh my god. Pokemon. Yes. He only has grass types. That'd be. <laughs> he's just. What if he's an NPC? He's just like, hold, hold, hold yeah. around. Just. Maybe, that's see, scary. that's another theory. Maybe we are in a simulation and he's just an it's NPC. It's the Matrix. That's scary. Guys, relax, Bro. it's the Matrix. This is proof. It's scary. Oh. All right, next one. All right. Uh, trigger warning. Uh, alluding to murder um, and close encounter with a real person. It's a weird one. This one comes from Creepy Encounters, hmm. uh, Sleepwalking Roommate. Oh, I had one oh, of those. And the twist is they oh, don't have a roommate. That. Watch that. Yeah. Um, okay. I recently acquired a new roommate. Acquired. Acquired? Uh, yeah. okay. Okay. okay, freak. Uh, are, they are they tied up in I basement? recently acquired <laughs> a new roommate. <laughs> okay. I recently acquired a new roommate. The entire situation should never have happened, but I needed someone to help with rent. So a Craigslist posting later, he moved in. His name was Greg, and he disclosed to me that he did have some strange sleeping behaviors. Sleep talking, sleepwalking, night terrors, funny thing was, I also had a history of sleepwalking, but only on rare occasions. Mm. What if they have a sleep relationship? They're like, yeah! yeah. <laughs> They're besties, uh, <laughs> except brothers. The first incident occurred about one weekend when I heard him screaming in the middle of the night. 
Uh, since we both slept in separate rooms on different sides of the house, the scream sounded distant, but enough to scare me so much that I ran to check on him. As I got closer to his bedroom, he stopped screaming, so I just went back to bed. For the next month, he had no issues. I noticed he had no friends or family that would visit, and I never saw or heard him on the phone or texting. Then, another random night, Greg started screaming. Same thing. I got up and started going to his room, uh, but he'd stopped. Then one night, I was awoken by screaming in my bedroom. Oh. I couldn't see anything in the panic, so I turned on the bedside lamp, and he was at the foot of my bed <laughs> wearing some sleeping clothes, athletic shorts, and a t-shirt. It scared me. So I started screaming and woke him up. He apologized and went back to bed. No. Then the scariest thing happened. Uh, about two nights later, I awoke to clanking. Sounded like tools and hammers tapping. I turned on the light to see Greg kneeling down in a corner working on something with his hands. A few seconds after turning the light on, Greg froze, then slowly turned his upper body around and stared blankly at me while I laid in bed. I was beyond creeped out, so I slowly slid out of bed and left the house. After sleeping in my truck down the road in an empty church parking lot, I returned to the house at about eight in the morning. Greg was gone, all of his belongings were gone, no sign of him anywhere. It was like he never lived there. I didn't know, uh, I didn't know of any of his friends or family, so I had no one to call about him. Days turned to weeks, weeks into months. When the lease was up, I decided to move. One day, I was moving furniture out of my bedroom, and in the corner of the room where I had seen Greg kneeling down that night, I realized the floor vent for the air conditioning was loose. Inside the floor vent was an envelope with a ton of pictures of me sleeping. Oh. <gasps> the pictures had handwritten dates and times written on the back of them. The only other item was a whittled down wooden broom handle brought to a point. Oh. I truly believe Greg was preparing to kill me that night oh. and he realized it. Maybe because it was the sleepwalking Greg that was going to do it, he left, the save, uh, he left to save my life. It appears Greg had been coming to my room almost nightly and working on making the broom handle a stabbing weapon and I never heard until the last night I saw him. I'm sorry. That was awesome. You said these stories weren't going to keep me up at night. No, that, well, that was, that's well, I said I was awesome. Have you acquired a new roommate yeah. lately? Yeah, I got married. What? No. I'm fucked. Dude, <laughs> I'm going to be single forever, man. Honestly, <laughs> that's I, I, crazy. I sleepwalk, I sleepwalk and sleep talk and have night terrors, mm. but mine have just been dumb. Like, I'll be like, mm. hello. Yeah, <laughs> like, right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, you're not actually a serial killer, so. Yeah. Wait. So okay, so okay, yeah, so okay. So, so his two, interpretation. There's two options: is there's maybe a sleep Greg. Greg they, of course, it's Greg. Sleeping Greg was Why is the serial was killer? it sleeping Greg was doing all this stuff, or, or Greg is saying cover. it's a cover, and that's, so Greg was actually going to kill. Him. Like, I think it's I think it's a cover. Yeah, I've never heard cover. of someone sleep taking photos and like writing down the dates and could, times yeah, and being so like, oh, so this is this is Nathan asleep on January. Yeah. Fifth at, yeah. uh, I'm asleep right it now. It could be like, um, yeah. <laughs> a Wait. sleepwalking, uh, a split personality disorder thing that could be like crazy. This is like a really good movie. Yeah. Write it down. Yeah. This it down. is really scary. Um, yeah. So comments here. <laughs> Uh, a lock on your bedroom door after the first incident would have been a good investment, closely followed uh, by telling Greg to move out ASAP. Glad you survived. Recommend you avoid Craigslist when looking for a housemate in the future. Craigslist. Uh, commenter, uh, someone here in the comments wrote a story. Uh, so this is a story within a story. I too have a sporadic sleepwalking episodes, but that what was most terrifying for me was discovering how well I was able to convince my housemates I was awake. My mm. worst episode involved sleep cooking. Mm -hmm. If you call microwave mac and cheese cooking. I apparently had some creepily convinced responses to people, including my closest friends, that, I, that questioned my groggy demeanor. They had already concluded that I was tired and affected by my nighttime medications, which, which are sedating. For one person, I gave the story that I was a little drunk. I wasn't. Considering our place was known as a party house, such a statement wasn't cause for alarm. I would never have even known this had happened if, it, if I didn't wake up with macaroni and cheese in my hair mm -hmm. and a practically full bowl of congealed mac and cheese next to my bed the next morning. I obviously asked what the f happened the night before and why I had mac and cheese in my hair, and that's how I discovered the above details. It's so scary to know that you can uh, undertake complex tasks mm -hmm. while totally asleep and have zero recollection of it. There were no corresponding dreams or anything. It is something that was never committed to my memory. When I hear stories like this, 
I feel for people like Greg, just as much as the OP. Greg's experience is not unlike the manifestation of my worst fears, although mine involved trying to drive while asleep and potentially killing someone. So I would constantly change where I kept my keys to prevent my, my oh. any rote behaviors. I gave my housemates warning that if I seem out of it, that even if I can talk coherently, they should try to direct me back to bed. Mm -hmm. I also asked them to ensure that I wasn't in possession of my keys if they noticed me in this state. Mm -hmm. uh, if I was so freaked out by sleep cooking episode, I can't even imagine discovering that I was preparing to murder someone while asleep with no <laughs> conscious awareness of it. Coming to terms with that realization they, and then trying to figure out what to do, I truly feel for both Greg and the OP, this must be beyond terrifying for all involved. Uh, wow. I, I think I think he was a murderer. Uh, you know, a question I have is murder during sleepwalking possible? Uh, well, I guess according to crimetraveler.org, yes. um, according to a study yeah. carried out in France in 2013, 58% of the 140 adult sleepwalkers studied displayed violent behavior during their sleep, yep. with 31% of violent incidents being towards themselves and 46% towards their partner sleeping next to them. The study carried out by researchers at the Sleep Disorders Center Hospital Gué de Chuliac in Montpelier uh, also found that those who started sleepwalking at a young age had a higher frequency of viol violent behaviors causing injuries and that violent behavior during sleep was often accompanied by sleep terrors. Mm -hmm. Also known as also known as homicidal somnambulism, this occurrence is thankfully very rare. However, it has happened with at least 68 cases of sleepwalking murder reaching a courtroom, leaving a jury the task of deciding whether a murder committed while asleep means criminal responsibility or for the unfortunate sleepwalker. So it sounds like most violent stuff is more like reactionary yeah, like it's like you're stuff. getting waked up or like that's Yeah, like, like it's like, not writing the dates. But but not like, actual planned yeah. premeditated murder. Yeah, like um, I think he probably did sleepwalk. And I'm curious of the 68 cases of sleepwalking murder. I've heard like I've heard I've heard of that too. I've heard a case but it's of but, that. But are, like, were it's those... like somebody in bed like just beating the shit out of like yeah. Yeah, her like, husband or wife yeah, or like whatever. Yeah, like actually beating the shit out of them but, like, and then murdering. But yeah. not premeditated not, like, oh, no, like I whittled away at a yeah. thing. Yeah, no, he's whittling in his sleep just. That is so creepy. But like. Also, but I think he did also sleepwalk because I think in part of the story, didn't he say like he woke up to him screaming, like just him screaming at him in bed? And but like maybe, that his, maybe that was his. Maybe that was his. Or that's the cover. I, I think when you are sleepwalking, nothing is connected. Like for no, me, when I'm no. sleepwalking, nothing is connected. You're in yes. another state, but yeah. you're walking through your home. So yeah. for him to write the person's name yeah. down, what yeah. the date it's, is, yeah. what, or the time, yeah. that is not sleepwalking. I know, you like watch people sleep, like again, Selena Spooky was she known for sleepwalking and you watch her videos and it's just chaos. Like she's just, she's throwing Coke bottles out a window. Like it's like, she's just she doing, herself. but I've like pushed my mom down the stairs while sleepwalking before. When I was when I was like ten, oh not God. intentionally, oh. but like, but that's in a case where it's just like, you know, she's in the way and I'm yeah, sleepwalking. Yeah, you're trying to. I, w I didn't wanna. You heard her. She, she was okay. Okay, it's fine. I love my mom. And I, but I've also <laughs> made peanut butter and jam sandwiches. Like I've, I've never done that. made food. I've definitely gone to like a different place. Yeah. I've left the house. Yeah. None of it I've, makes sense though. Yeah. That's yeah. Scary. I've I've gone underneath things. I've like locked myself yeah. in rooms. Yeah. Like, have, did you hurt yourself? Because I would always wake I've up with so many bruises. I definitely stubbed my toe. Yeah. I used to hit my, my arm because I was on a bunk bed, and I had <gasps> metal me bars, and I just would hit my arm and I'd like wake up with all these bruises on me and then I'd like fall out of bed all the time. Oh yeah, me too. I'd Love fall that. out of bed. Wow, we're just like... Look at us. Look at us. Broken bones. <laughs> Shane, you too? Yeah. <laughs> um, I was gonna say, my brain, my, my brain goes to, he was hearing Greg sleep. What if he checked the vents in Greg's room and he had been taking photos of Greg and also had a thing in there? Like yeah. Greg was, he was hearing Greg scream because that's him going to his room. That's a, that's and so horrible. Greg sleep, yeah, Greg's, Greg's sleep. What if Greg's sleepwalking self was like, I gotta kill him before he kills me? Yeah. But I gotta plan. So like, cross. what if he found? What if he's taking photos of Greg and it's like they're just having a fun little back and forth? That's a good horror wow, movie. That's what I'm saying, man. Because he mentions he mentions at the top that he sleepwalks. Yeah. But then they and then he never covers it again. Oh, I like. That. And you're like, like, and we kind of forgot about. What that. if you were gonna? Kill Greg. Okay, I like this. Write this down. Yeah, write this down. Write this down. Everybody, everybody, write this down. Guys, write this down. Okay. <laughs> Next story. Am I the asshole for not wanting to participate in my in-laws' death teeth ritual? Okay. <laughs> uh, good. Good start. Yep. Okay. Uh, my husband's family has an extremely bizarre set of rituals surrounding death and funerals. 
They're from Wales, but I don't think this is a cultural thing, and I haven't been able to find a basis for it, or even anything remotely similar from a cultural religious background. I think they might just be a bunch of weirdos. <laughs> so here goes. In my husband's family, before a corpse of a recently deceased family member is buried, they will have all of the teeth of the deceased knocked out, and will give one tooth to each of their living relatives to keep with them, in a fabric pouch which they're meant to keep with them. Yeah. They even have a system for how they decide which family member gets which tooth based on their proximity to the deceased. Any teeth that the deceased uh, had collected themselves over their life is added into an ornate chest, which is literally filled with thousands of human teeth. Apparently this goes back many generations. I found out about this tradition about a year after I got married to my husband. We were at his grandmother's funeral when my mother-in-law gave me a pouch with one of her molars. My husband got very upset when I told him I didn't want to participate in this ritual. At the time, I was only talking uh, about not wanting to carry around his family member's teeth, but evidently it's expected that after I die, they'll knock out my teeth to be distributed to the family members. He asked me whether I would really deny my children the ability to have something to remind them of me after I pass away or to feel left out from their cousins. I'm trying to be understanding and polite, and other than this, his family is lovely, but to me this whole practice seems completely f***ing insane. I don't want my teeth knocked out and distributed to a bunch of random relatives, and there's no way in hell that my side of the family will understand or accept this. Am I the asshole for not accepting this? Based on how our last conversation went, I think he's considering divorce. Oh. Uh, edit, a bunch of people have commented that my post and some of my comments are really judgmental, which I get. I'm coming around to the idea that it's not necessarily that weird. I think my negativity mainly came from uh, how the conversation with my husband went and his insistence that I participate. Mm. Dude, this is why you need pre-marriage counseling because before you get married, your husband should be like, oh yeah, also, there's a ritual that we yeah. do. Um, we gotta take we your teeth. bust your teeth Th out. You need to have these conversations before you get married. Yeah. I'm shocked that she didn't know about this. Yeah, that's like a big thing. Big! Yeah. Also, that's her teeth. She has a family yeah. that might not want her teeth knocked out. Right, right? that's the level that's, where I'm like yeah. completely not on his side. So I'm like, your family has a tradition. Yeah, and, and that's it's fine. Fun. Like, you can't control what your family's tradition yeah. is, and you can even, care about it, sure. but to say, you have to do this. Yeah, that's weird. And we've had a lot of stories in, in Reddit stories where someone's like, our family has this tradition and you have to participate or I'm yeah. getting a divorce from you. And yeah. I'm like, that's, like, that's where it gets into controlling bye. behavior. Yeah, that's weird. And that that is so weird. It's not like something like, oh, like grandma cuts the turkey. Like, it's yeah, like, it's like exactly. no. Yeah, grandma, after, don't cut the turkey Don't, anymore. yeah, don't ever let grandma. <laughs> grandma you're done cutting Her the teeth might fall into the um, turkey. Ew. It's not distributed. I, <laughs> I look, uh, is this, for me and my upbringing, is this abnormal? Yeah, but I actually don't see this as being that No, no I think I'm not like, whatever. what, people do that? I'm no. like, yeah, death people, has a lot of rituals. Keep stuff. I, I mean, people have Lots ashes. Of hair. A ashes are, it, that's I, it the had same me, thing. I, I thought it, about it's it. It's the same thing, the actually. Same thing. No, it is, I don't think it's weird. I actually don't really think I, it's weird at all. And I, why does it matter? You're dead, what the f I do think, you care about your yeah, teeth, No, I, exactly. I definitely think, I th what I think about is that I think all animals probably think humans are weird for everything we do with True. dead bodies. They're like, it's, we're putting their heads on walls. They're like, wait, I, I, don't, I don't understand. Why don't you just dead? Just get like, rid of it. Know. Just burn it. The whole, yeah, I, yeah all, all traditions Light around death are strange to someone else. Yeah. yeah, exactly. I don't think, I don't think you can judge someone's traditions after death. Death, no. death deals, people deal with death always differently. But mm -hmm. I do think that Forcing someone to no. be a part of a tradition yeah. that isn't their family tradition. Yeah, that's kind of it's really that's it's where kind it's of weird. scary. It's like, hey, after you're dead, we're gonna take your knock like, out your teeth. That's is just kind a of really aggressive. Yeah, it's, it's a little aggressive. And then we have this chest that we're gonna give to the two. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Some comments here. Not the asshole. What the fuck? I'm horrified <laughs> after reading that. They're your teeth. If you don't want them knocked out and distributed, I think that's fair. A chest full of teeth. That's not leaving my mind for a while. <laughs> Someone else said, sounds like they held on to some Victorian mourning rituals. Yeah. They absolutely included. Uh, Things like mourning jewelry made of teeth. I myself have mourning lockets with a lock of hair from the deceased sealed inside. It's yeah. a thing. Another commenter, uh, teeth were used just not nearly as commonly as hair. From my understanding, it was teeth the deceased had lost and saved during their life though, mm -hmm. not teeth ripped out after death. Yes. Uh, someone else said teeth were used as well. There's documentation of several mourning rings made out of molars. Uh, yeah, Victorian traditions I've heard about. Victorian yeah. era, we loved death. Yeah, yeah. Loved Seth. Yeah, like my mom has some of our teeth from when we were kids. Same. Oh yeah. Like my that's normal. Teeth, so yeah. then when you think about it, it's like, oh yeah, that really isn't that normal. But or that just isn't not normal. But I know yeah. what you're saying. I I think it's kind of fun. Yeah. I think I, it's kind of fun. I think whatever you decide right. to do with death. <laughs> I mean, if you want to be a Viking yeah. and 
Yeah. Have the two horses go I out hope, on a boat? I hope like whoever I'm with or what my family just like takes my skull and puts it as like a centerpiece on their coffee table. <laughs> <laughs> it's like an ashtray. Call me Chris. <laughs> <laughs> so I sign it. Yeah. Oh, wait, I can. You can't. As a, wait, as a ghost. As a ghost. You sign it as a ghost. Oh, just, residual. Residual. What is it called? Residual. Residual haunting. haunting. Mm -hmm. I love this. Chris. But yeah, like after I'm dead, I hope like, yeah, just make the most of it, you know? Go crazy. Oh, I want to be Have I a bonfire. Burned, and I want to be like in the ocean. There are places I have. You can make yourself into a diamond. There's fun things. Whoa. Yeah, yeah. you can. You can put yeah. ashes in jewelry and Impress wear it. it. Makes it into a diamond. I mean, I keep all my pups. Click the link in the ashes. description below. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Call me Chris. Call me. <laughs> That's so great. creepy. <laughs> I Thanks. Why. Thanks. I don't know why. I keep <laughs> That's why I'm gonna that. do my outro so <laughs> Call me Chris. Call me Chris. <laughs> I I want someone. Uh, maybe when I die, they'll get one of those mausoleums, those like uh, on the surface things. Yeah. But I won't be like put in one of the walls. Yeah. They'll just put me on a lawn chair in the middle. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> just my skeleton just there with sunglasses yes. and a Coors banquet. Just yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. That's fun. It's like That's chilling, cool. dude. That's good. Chilling. I like that. I, we talked about this on our podcast. How about? Ghosts and everything is scary. Skeletons, for some reason, hilarious. Hilarious. Skeletons get to be the silly. Thing. They're so cool. I love skeletons. I, I, I've talked about how canonically in my head all skeletons do cocaine. <laughs> I don't know. That's because they're like. Doesn't it make sense? Yep. Skeletons are always on the, that have that type of energy. Like, yes. And they got those big nose holes. Yep. To do yes. It. All right. Last story. This one's this one's pretty scary. A lot of potentially supernatural stuff. Uh, I think Ooh. this one's. I think this might be our spookiest one. Okay. Are you sure? Because Greg is yeah, top Greg's notch. Still Sleepwalking this. Greg yeah. is a lot. Okay, here we go. I'll never go back there again. Ooh. Ooh. Spoopy. This one is quite long, so buckle up. Worth it. Before my best friends and I, uh, 20s male, were uh, separated, one passed away, the other moved away, we used to ride around do doing all of the haunted legend places within reasonable driving distances. Sometimes we'd drive a few hours, but most of, the, most of them weren't scary other than the adrenaline-filled, hyped up. Did you hear that? Did you see that? That would cause us to get, uh, get, get spooked. This one was different, way different. We were just out of uh, high school, probably 20 at most, and we were looking for an actually scary place to visit. A lot of the people who knew us knew we were into these kinds of things, so we'd always get tips on where to go. It was the original three of us that day, plus another friend that wanted to tag along. After a little drive to our destination, about 45 minutes, we stopped at a Wawa to get gas and grab a few snacks. Like I stated earlier, we were all about 20 at the time, so we were all hyped up. We knew spooky time was getting close. We'd always pick on the, uh, that other friend that tagged along. Nothing harsh, just, ah, you're scared. <laughs> so I believe it was me that said something along those lines, which was overheard by a few people. It got the attention of these two creepy older guys who seemed like they didn't fit in. Their clothes were all beat up and dirty and they just didn't seem right for the area and time. It was probably 8 p.m. on a Saturday night. What's the little one scared of? Asked one of the guys. I say little because the three of us are all abnormally tall. The shortest between us three was 6'4", and our tag along was normal height, probably about 5'9". We replied and explained how we got tipped to go to this road because it's haunted. They replied that it wasn't that scary, and if we wanted a real scare, that we should go to this other road. I forget what it was called exactly, but apparently there's this random memorial statue for a plane crash in the middle of the woods that crazy things are supposed to happen at. We grabbed our stuff and didn't think anything of it. As soon as we left, the group started talking and decided to go with the other road that the guys hyped up. I know, a typical horror movie, what not to do. So we get to the entrance of the road, and it already did not disappoint. Woods on both sides, not one damn street light in sight, and I remember there was a, like a detention center off to the right, in the middle of nowhere. So the spooks already began the second we hit the entrance. We decided to drive down the road and search for the statue. We noticed that there were trees cut down on the side of the road and logs were laying parallel to the shoulder of the road. We finally find the statue. About five minutes of silence goes by and we decided to enhance the scare factor by shutting the lights off. About a minute goes by and we see a shadow figure pop out from the statue. We all freak out as it starts walking towards us, but it was making movements that no human would be normally capable of. It was dark out, but this thing was darker than the woodsy sky, so we could make, make out some of it. It was huge. Like I said earlier, we were all extremely large compared to the average guy, but this thing would have dwarfed any of us. We decided to peel out of there and continue down the road, figuring uh, it would lead us out of there. 
Boy, were we wrong. About three minutes go by and we hit a dead end, which in this case was an open spot in the woods with sand everywhere. The cutout was massive, but surrounded by woods. There were different cutouts and ways to go from there, and I'm pretty sure the road continued after this cutout, but we were pretty deep in the woods at this point. So we decided to turn around there and obviously leave. After we turn around, we stopped just to take in the eerie feeling. The other three guys were talking about the shadow we saw earlier while I happened to catch something out of the corner of my eye. About 40 feet away from me, I see what appears to be a white face and then another and then another, all surrounding the car. The other guys didn't see them. I rarely ever get scared, but seeing me panic, they knew something was up. My panic caused them to panic. All panicking now, we floor it far away from the sand turnaround. We get about a half a mile down the road, somewhat near the statue, and pull over to gather our composure to get out of there. When we stopped, I swear I heard the typical ghost, ooh, noise. This was now turning into a movie I wish I was never a part of. So we all are really scared now. After finding the way we came, we started heading back out. Remember those logs I talked about earlier? They were now laying in the middle of the road blocking us in, as we all see the white faces, masks, that I saw earlier. Thank God my friend was good at driving and valued safety over his car. We drove on the edge of the woods at what felt like defying gravity speed to find our way out. The car was literally sideways on the edge of the woods. I mean, I could literally stick a f single finger out the window and touch the trees. We all made it home safely that night. After doing research, we found that that spot was notorious in the area for crazy things happening, such as body dumps and murders. Because of the shadow and the ghost noise we heard, my head, heart, and gut tell me that the place is actually haunted. As previously stated, that place is famous for dumping bodies, along with the plane crash 100 years ago. So there's bound to be some spirits there. Uh, I think where we were that night was actually haunted. We just happened to be there on a night where, uh, where there were more things going on. I can't help but think that evil looking shadow from the statue was actually an angel in disguise trying to scare us away from the doom that was upon us. I can't say for certain, but I'm 99% sure we survived one of their setups that night, but I'm 100% sure I will never go back again. I got chills just typing this and I never tell this story. There were four of us there. One took our story to the grave and I'm sure the rest of us won't speak much about it either. Whenever we even bring it up in front of people, we always use the code uh, THMTW so that we don't have to actually talk about it. THMTW of course stands for the horror movie that wasn't. That's what? crazy. Uh, yeah, wow. The uh, logs in the road yeah, that's, makes me think that those old those, dudes yeah. like, have a setup. Right? Like they were going to murder them? Yeah. The, I wonder what this plane crash was, because a plane crash... A hundred years ago, yeah. It doesn't make sense. I'm like, um, <laughs> the Wright brothers I crashed here. I don't think here. the math is mathing right now. <laughs> um, but a, a plane a crash. A big American Airlines plane yeah. <laughs> <laughs> crash. Uh, comments, what was the statue of? Would you be willing to share the location? Mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely. It was this random memorial statue in the Pine Barrens in New Jersey. I was just, I was gonna say, is it Jersey? So the Pine Barrens alone means creepy bad news. I, yes, it's, okay, that's so, I was just researching this because I'm really? gonna go there and there's so many stories about this and the way you're describing it sounded like Jersey. And the Pine Barrens. And the sand, because the sand's really bad there and people actually get stuck there and like sink into the sand and <gasps> stuff and it's like, it's crazy. What? Quick sand in New Jersey? It's like, well, it's just sand, like their vehicles get stuck in the sand yeah. so people get stuck out there and then they get lost and people get like, get lost and they die out there. What? So this is the memorial site. Yeah. Uh, the Carranza Memorial Historical Site, Mexican aviator Captain Emilio Carranza Rodriguez was selected to undertake a goodwill flight from Mexico City to New York City in response to the 1927 flight from New York City to Mexico City undertaken by American aviator Charles Lindbergh. He became an international hero when he accomplished this in June of 1928 to great acclaim. Tragically, while flying back to Mexico in July 1928, Carranza's plane got caught in a thunderstorm over the New Jersey Pinelands and crashed. He did not survive. Mm -hmm. um, mm. So there was a plane crash back in 1928. Uh, I think in my mind I was thinking a big commercial flight. Yeah, and totally. So, so this yeah. makes sense. <laughs> that makes sense. Uh, some Pine Barrens lore here. Yeah. 
The Pine Barrens Jersey of New Jersey Devil. encompasses over 1.1 million acres yeah. of preserved yeah. woodlands yeah. Uh, spanning seven counties. The land is mostly rural and dotted with ruins of former mill and mining settlements, along with an incredible assortment of ghost towns. Mm -hmm. This heavily forested stretch of the state is also known for an abundance of ghosts. Mm -hmm. Many national publications have listed this scenic spot among the most haunted places in the country. Oh, yeah. um, devil, man. The I've, Jersey Devil I've is like a creature that lives in the forest that people claim to see. It's like this mishmash of animals all put together and what? like it makes this weird like screeching sound and people see it flying through and it's like That's also similar area to Mothman. M Mothman yeah. is Virginia, right? Yes, kind of like that. Or like like a you know like, I want to go. Uh Sasquatch or Yeah, I know. Right? Pine, you want to come? What is it called? Pine Pine Barrens. You want to get lost in the Have a have a bush you party with me? You want to get lost in the woods, <laughs> little <laughs> girl. <laughs> See once again, again once lost. again and once again the the Jersey Devil, all the ghosts and stuff. That doesn't scare me as much as these two weird guys. Yeah, in the gas totally. Station. I'm just I'm like you. I think you set them up. I think you're right. But also, like, how do they put the logs in the road? They're like, Rick, get the logs. He's <laughs> yeah. like, I'm trying. <laughs> yeah. I'm trying. I got a hernia, Roger. God damn. Uh, <laughs> Someone said, I wouldn't be surprised if the people you saw creeping towards your car were the same exact dudes yeah. who told you uh, where that place was. I don't think it was a coincidence that they just happened to tell you yeah. that. Yeah. You and your friends were most definitely meant to be trapped the hell out there because yeah. it was a setup. Yeah, that's yeah. what it sounds like. Yeah, yeah. these like, guys were like, oh, oh these yeah. these boys from the city. Yeah, why did let's, they let's give them a scare. Let's why get did them. the other friends see the white masks? What were they doing? I, I don't know. Because he said yeah, only that's he saw weird. it. I mean, maybe they were murderers. Yeah, that's their thing, is they put the white mask yeah, on. Yeah, probably. Maybe they, those they guys murder. were there and were murderers, but they also saw ghosts. Maybe. Uh, murderers. His interpretation murderers. of the of the shadow being an angel trying to scare them, I'm like, I don't know about that, man. That's a lot. Yo, and then it gets closer, uh, it's like, yeah! Yeah, yeah. <laughs> He's like, yeah, yeah. Psych! <laughs> yeah. I'm not an angel, I'm a yeah. demon! Don't worry, guys, it's an angel. What? <laughs> I'm not an angel, I'm Greg. Yeah. <laughs> Greg came back. No. Greg is back. That's really? wild. But yeah. Mm. Also, also there are black bears still. Maybe it was a bear. black bear. Guys, it was just a bear. Could be. It was just a bear that was gonna it's eat. It's a bear. You. Yeah. He's like, Relax. it's an angel. It's like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's what they sound like, That's by the way. They sound like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like a girl throwing <laughs> up at <laughs> <a> hardcore. <laughs> it's not like those toys from the <laughs> dollar store. <laughs> <laughs> um. Or a girl is just blackout. <laughs> Amy, okay. <laughs> 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 Amy, 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 wake Amy up! Have to go. The bar is closing. She's like, oh, oh. we found a ghost. Oh my god! No, it's two drunk chicks. <laughs> no, it's Amy, she comes out. She's like, that was insane. Oh my god! <laughs> that was crazy. That was crazy. <laughs> Where did this story go? I don't know. It's like, it's like hey, Scoob. <laughs> <laughs> it's the two drunk white women. <laughs> Scoops. <laughs> They're in a sorority. Retail. Sorority. I'm gonna pee. Uh, uh, anyway. Oh, uh, this is yeah. That's, that's scary, man. I don't know what the conclusion uh, is on very that. Very scary. Oh, uh, really scary. You man. guys are dumb. Don't, don't trust. Don't listen, to old men. men in the woods. All right? Really, don't do anything two random guys tell you to so do. You wanna get really scared? <laughs> if, if the second you they say that, you need to be like, I'm woods. leaving. <laughs> you wanna get lost in the woods, little boy? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Like, hello. Don't. The clerk was just like. Idiot. Yeah, they ring you up, and they're yeah. like, you know? the, they walk yeah. out, and then he's just they turn. The clerk turns to those two guys, like, you're gonna go kill them, aren't you? Yeah, and he's like, well, yeah. Can yeah. I All right, you got us. Yeah. We're we, gonna go kill them. We need two white masks. We're bored. We live in the Pine Barrens. Yeah, we're we gonna so go. bored. Exactly. Uh, are, how, are you guys gonna be able to sleep tonight? <sighs> I watch yeah. way darker shit. Yeah, this was all the time. Just well, we didn't want to go too scary. No, but it was good. It was no, like it was good. It was creepy. Spooky. I, I was surprised. I was spooked. It was good. I laughed. I laughed. I cried. But it was scary. Yeah. yeah. But I really like sitting around and talking about scary me stories too. so much. I forgot the cameras were here to be honest. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. What me else? Too. Oh. 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 What? Um. <laughs> Well, <laughs> <laughs> yes, we're making guttural noises. We get to continue to go back to just making silly videos, and you're gonna go search for the Jersey Devil. Yeah, so, so I'm gonna go where that. You're literally was. gonna go there. Yeah, I can't uh, wait to hear. So wait, how do I follow you? Yeah. How do I follow? Are you 
Are you filming this whole journey? You could follow me at Call Me Chris. That's that's it. <laughs> Call Me Chris. Call me Chris. <laughs> on YouTube, we uh, uh, Selena and I do two part series. So I post part one on my channel and part two is on Selena Spooky Boo's channel. So they're about an hour an episode, and we're gonna have we're gonna have lots, but that'll be one of them. Sorry, sure. Dateline, I'm taking a break. Yes, yes. Okay. I'm so excited. Yeah, I am too. Man, you're crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just white. <laughs> 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 All right. Uh, well, thank you. Thank you both for being here. This has been a lot of fun, and uh, thank, thank you for you. watching. Thank uh, you. Let us know what other themes and other types of episodes you want to see from us, and we'll see you later. <laughs> Bye. Bye. <Woo>. <laughs> <sighs> Just. <laughs>